Uh, more back to school coverage now. Madison Metro students are all headed back today, and our Leo Inside is live out there this morning to uh, help everyone make that transition. Hey there, Leo. Good morning, Chris. Yes, we're live outside of Lapham Elementary. Students are just starting to arrive before the 7 o'clock hour. Class starts here right around 7.30. Really exciting to see students with backpacks on heading back for their first day of classes. Kindergartners and 4K had returned here at the elementary yesterday. Today is the first day for lots of other students. Now, I have the honor of being joined by Dr. Carlton Jenkins, the superintendent of schools. Thanks for coming a little early to hang out with us. You no, know, thank you so much for being here. Here and covering this story. So excited to have our students coming back, seeing our parents, and just everybody getting back together now in schools. I have to start by asking, you were telling me off camera a really, really beautiful story about the medallion you're wearing. Can you describe the history behind it? Yes, uh, this medallion was given to me when we did our land acknowledgement, knowing that this is whole chunk land, and in our district, our board is actually uh, authorized us to do a land acknowledgement, put a plaque on all of our schools. And so two students actually shared with us, shared with myself, that they don't see themselves anywhere in our schools, in our curriculum. And I was like, wow, really? And so as a result, we did the land acknowledgement. Shea, one of our social workers, actually gave me the medallion and just representing unit unity. And we want to definitely make sure that all of our students feel like they belong in our district and rightfully so. This is Ho Chunk's land, and we're just so uh, honored to have the opportunity to be here and all of us celebrating together as a community. An example of why representation matters. Switching gears here, I want to talk about the staffing shortage. Currently, we're right around an estimated 130 staffing shortages or staffing positions open. Uh, we're filling those positions with long term subs. What sort of lengths are you going to right now to get those positions filled as quickly as possible? Yeah, that's a great question, and we've just been working like our colleagues around the country to do this. Even an example, this month, we had 21 teachers to resign, but we hired 38. We had two fairs, we had the hybrid, we had the virtual fair. And so that number is fluctuating, uh, but it's still hovering about around 130. But what we have in the backup, we have 275 highly qualified teachers, some former teachers who can come step in in those places that we need someone. And we have roughly about 550 to 600 subs on our list. But we also have other areas that we have to look at, like our food service and our custodial staff, and making sure that we're fully staffed. But right now, we're coming off of yesterday on a real high because we had everything covered today the same way. And then teachers are stepping up, too, and still ready to support those new teachers coming in and any uh, long-term sub that we may have in place. A question on COVID now. We are finally seeing things come back to normal at least a little bit this year uh, after several years of dealing with pandemic restrictions. But, you know, there's a concern that cases will tick back up this mm -hmm. fall. Worst case scenario, could we see schools go virtual again? Uh, at this particular point, we know more now than what we knew 30 months ago. Just as you and I standing here interviewing today, we wouldn't have done this last year like this. We know more that um, we can do the mitigation strategies, keeping space particular like now while we're outside. You don't have to have a mask on. We're still following CDC, the state, and our local... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, health department. And the recommendation inside for our district is highly recommended with the mask inside, but outside, because we know more now, we can be without masks. And this has given us an opportunity to really get back to some of the things we enjoy, the magic of schools, of having close proximity, the way that we deliver instruction, the teachers can make their things happen with our students, the connections yesterday, and we anticipate today is just gonna be fabulous. Briefly, you don't anticipate classes to go back uh, we virtually. Do not, uh, but at the same time, we never know. We, we didn't know that the pandemic was going to come like it did. At this point, we're hopeful like everybody else. We can't give you an absolute prediction. You know, we know that we have the monkeypox also rising right now. We'll continue to uh, watch it with our medical advisors, and we will follow the science as it's telling us right now. But right now, it appears that we have more strategies to be able to address it and to be able to keep schools open as we know that it's very helpful for our students social emotion and mental health to be in place dr jenkins thanks so much for your time this morning i know you've got to uh welcome the students back we'll let you go thank you so much okay thank you so much we appreciate you covering this all right chris you can find more coverage of back to school up on channel 3000.com for now back to you thanks leah